Hello everybody. So it is uh, towards the end of July of 2023 and it's a nice overcast cool afternoon. So I thought I would just do a quick walkthrough and show you what I'm doing when I'm not tie dyeing. So I've got my fuchsia basket there for my little hummingbirds and we've got a bunch of hummingbirds. Now the hydrangea, they're not looking so great. It's been extremely hot and they don't like a lot of sunshine and direct sunshine and heat. So um, a lot of them are looking kind of burnt. So this is the blushing bride and you can see it got annihilated by the sun. Got some new blooms here and I might come out and you know, trim these back, you know, or, you know, uh, deadhead it just to make it look pretty. I think this one is called Endless Summer and it's so beautiful. Starts out pink and as it ages, it will turn into purples and blues. Now, they are all collapsed down on the ground. So early on when they first uh, started blooming, we had a really heavy rain and everything fell over. But what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna leave everything alone they can go ahead and collapse because next year's growth will be on new wood and old wood. And I want the plant to just be whatever it needs to be. And if I come in and I look real close, well, I can't really show you on this one, but there's a lot of new growth. And next year I'm gonna have nice big stems that are gonna come and fill up the area. Now this one is my absolute favorite of this whole row. It's got extremely strong stems, beautiful waxy leaves, fantastic, beautiful pink blooms, which are struggling because of the heat. Um, but I'm gonna try to clone it and then um, have these for sale for people um, that want them. Uh, this, this plant is amazing and it's so healthy and it's just so strong like that whole shoot there is new this year um i think it gets about i don't know five or six feet tall and five and six feet wide but i mean look at how amazing they're all amazing i love hydrangea but this one is incredible now this is a good old-fashioned one i'm not sure exactly what the name is on it but it, it struggles the most out of all of them. And as you can see, the blooms have really, really been annihilated. But there's a ton of new growth. And if I leave this stem down here, this stem will turn and grow up. And so the, it's just gonna get bigger and bigger and bushier. So if you plant hydrangea, try to plant them in an area where you can just leave them alone and let them do their thing. Um, you can obviously deadhead them and prune them and do whatever you want, but um, when you have to do that, you, you cut off new growth. Like, let's see, like, oh, right here. Like, this may grow this year, but that's probably going to be next year's growth. And if I, I come in here and start hacking this plant back, I'm gonna lose all of next year's blooms. Now this one is also a pink one, which I love, but it collapsed probably the worst out of all of them. But again, I'm just gonna leave it. And I was noticing when I was out here watering just a few minutes ago, I'm super excited, but if you can come down here and look right on this, this old wood, all of this is growing. And these will be new stems next year that are gonna be, oops, that leaf there they're gonna come in and fill in and make this plant look really gorgeous. Let's see, what's this one called? Summer. I'm pretty sure I got this one at Home Depot. Summer Crush. It's a gorgeous plant. It's not gonna get super huge, but that's very um, hopeful. All of that, new buds. I don't know what they're gonna do this year, but I know they'll be there for next year. Okay, now let me back up a little bit. Look at that. So this butterfly bush is amazing. It is just so strong and so healthy, and I'm definitely going to clone this one as well and have them um, to sell off 
because it's incredible and I have so many butterflies the hummingbirds love it the bumblebees and bees and all of the pollinators come to it like crazy and then this one is a lavender one and it is very very fragrant and then there's another one just like the one I just showed you it never gets quite as big um, I think it gets a little bit less Sun okay so now for the garden these onions they reseeded themselves so I've just left them I have no idea what they're gonna do I think they're Walla Walla sweets from last year and we'll just see I went really small with the garden this year um, compared to last it's just it's so much work and it's a lot of food that it never goes to waste I take it down to the church and donate it if you know if the neighbors can't take it I make sure it goes to a pantry somewhere but it's just so much food so these are ha jalapenos and I'm already getting some on here and I need to come and pick them so that way this plant will try to produce more fruit there's some on there there's a good one right there and then these are supposed to be jumbo jalapenos and they're looking pretty good also got some on here I need to pick that's I mean look at that's a pretty good one but I only did four jalapenos this year instead of what I do last year I think I did like nine or 12 jalapeno plants and then I did a row of peppers I mean it was crazy I did a lot now these are bush beans uh, I didn't feel like doing any trellising this year so I you know I went real lazy with it but they're already putting on um, some beans that I need to come out here and pick so I'm excited about that and then I just did four tomatoes so I did a big beef an early girl um, a sweet 100 you know just a good old-fashioned cherry tomato and then this one is a golden pear cherry tomato so I'm excited about that. I don't know if I'm gonna get any tomatoes this year because I didn't plant my garden until the end of June because I wasn't gonna do it. And then I changed my mind because I knew that if I didn't, I'd probably be pretty bummed out. But I'm already now just getting some uh, fruits. So here is a zucchini. I picked two last night, but um, just today this one I have another one coming right here it's very exciting um, if I come around over here let's see there's another one let me see if I can get it down in there so I'll have to pick that one tonight this one's ouch it's a little sharp I could pick this one but I might let it go overnight they double in size overnight so I did two green zucchinis and I did two yellow. So this plant here is a yellow and nothing really is happening too much yet, but I don't know if you can see that there, there's a little squash starting, delicious. And then this one, this one's not doing a whole heck of a lot yet either, but I just love how beautiful these plants look like the gorgeous green with the um, orange flowers so beautiful and then as an afterthought I put in this um, second yellow squash because I put it along the drip line here um, because it just had the, all this open wasted space with the drip line I didn't want to waste water now if I turn this way I planted two regular uh, cucumbers on this um, tr trellis it's a tomato cage these uh, tomato cages are the best so these are two just standard cucumbers and then I did two of the Japanese uh, cucumbers over here and you can see how the heat has just been really taking its toll um, I saw oh my gosh I didn't even realize I had that in there it's little it's just pickle size right now but that's pretty exciting I need to come out and sort of help trellis this up I want it to grow up the cage and not down on the ground 
Now, let's see here. Oh, while I'm over here at the cages, if you guys are curious um, what cages I use, I left this tag on on purpose because I wanted to show you guys. I get them at Wilcox, Wilco. I don't know how you say it, but this is the brand. If you can uh, Google it, they're amazing. They're super duper sturdy and they last forever. Okay, now let's go over to the flowers. Um, I just got done feeding this organic food. I do this once every, I don't know, maybe two, three weeks. I put it in one of those spray feeders and I just go for it and it works really well. It stinks so bad though. It smells like rotten fish, but that, that smell means it's working. <laughs> Over here, I have some dahlias, and I must get out here and tie them up. I've been stalling. It's just been so hot, but they're they're wanting to fall, uh, fall forward. Uh, the and, and also, I wanted to do this because the crocosamy is going to start to drop all of its blooms, but it just looks so pretty, and the bumblebees and the hummingbirds and the butterflies just adore this stuff. It's grassy looking but you can see how the heat has just been um, cooking it, making it look not so good. Like this butterfly bush gets all day sun. It gets uh, no relief. And the soil, I need to amend the soil. It's very clay there and you know, it's really struggling, um, but it, it will be okay. I'll save it. Maybe not this year, but so, hey, do you guys have one of these hoses? If you don't, I recommend you get it. I got this one at Costco, but it will wind itself up. Let me show you. Oh, my hand is dry, so it's gonna wanna try to burn my hand, but it's winding itself. My hand is dry, so it's sticking to my hand. Ooh, look at all that dirt. We're almost there. Ooh. It puts itself away from me. Now I usually leave it out all the time because I'm just gonna have to pull it back out again in the morning, so I'm pretty lazy about it, but you know, hey, it works. And I'll get a close-up shot of the fuchsia basket because it's so pretty when the blooms just open up. Mm, so beautiful. Okay, now real quick, we'll just go over to the, um, the wildflowers. So this is one of my pots and I have zinnia. I have lobelia and I have petunia. And I just love zinnia. If I'm not growing dahlias, I always try to have the zinnia because the hummingbirds and the butterflies and um, all the pollinators really love it. And just look at how pretty this uh, petunia is with the, the lavender with the dark center like that. It's just absolutely gorgeous. And the bees will crawl all the way in there. It's kind of cute to watch them do their thing. The rhododendron are struggling. They're getting a lot of bleaching from the excessive sun. I'm doing my very best to keep them alive. The blood good maple, I swear it's put on at least two feet um, since last year. It's looking great. <clears throat> Bo gave me this little uh, rose out of, you know, the grocery store and I planted it out here and I'm actually getting a little bit of a bud. Don't throw those away, you guys. Take them out and put them in your yard. Now look at how gorgeous these pots are and it's just more of the same. Now this is um, salvia, lobelia, some more of the petunia and the zinnias. Love them. Beautiful. And against this uh, blue pot that I got at Costco. And they're plastic, so they're lightweight. 
um, gorgeous. Just more of the same. This one I have a striped petunia in there and it's got the little ruffle leaves. I just think they're so cute. And the pollinators love them. Oh, and I have a friend. Come in. And just more of the same. The pollinators love this. Now, the salvia is really cool because once the bloom is spent, like these, um, it looks a lot like lobelia flowers, but it's the salvia. And when it's done, it still looks cool because um, it has like this spike. And I, you know, you can come out, like this is a new growth. You can come out and deadhead it, but I just leave it alone and let it do its thing because it will seed. And if it spreads all over the yard for the pollinators, I'm happy about that. And then I have a, this is a beautiful yellow dahlia. Getting a bud. It's gonna open up here pretty soon. I'm excited about that. And then just over here in the wildflower area, it's a hodgepodge. It's kind of like a hot mess. I just sort of just let it do its thing. I keep it watered. Um, but I don't really worry about deadheading and all of that because I feel like if it's going to seed, look what we can find here. If it's going to seed and spread around, I'm okay with that. You see how they just crawl right in there. Oh, got a couple of them. It's another one that just went in there. So cute. I just love the bumblebees. Busy bee, busy bee. But I have the Black Eyed Susans, and I don't really know what this, this stuff is called, but it comes back every year. The Black Eyed Susans, I planted more zinnia. No idea what this stuff is called, but it looks like little trumpet flowers, and supposedly the hummingbirds are attracted to it. Just some classic daisies which I probably should come out and take this off and it'll help with more daisy flowers, but we'll also make seeds and then come fall, uh, the little birds will have stuff to eat. So I moved that. This used to be right up in front. This will grow three feet tall. And when I dug it up, it broke into, um, I was able to break it into three plants. So this is called, Cardinal flower, Lobelia, well, Fulgens, Queen Victoria. And it gets, yeah, three to four feet tall. And it does, it gets really tall. It's got super beautiful foliage. And then it puts these bright red uh, spikes of flowers and the hummingbirds absolutely love it. So I'm super excited that now I have three out of just the one plant. Look at how pretty that looks. No clue exactly what this stuff is either, but I've been seeing the insects go to that like crazy. And then I just planted some um, petunias and lobelia in there and the zinnia just to fill it in. This is another daisy, which I moved. This daisy was like right up underneath that uh, black eyed Susan daisy. And so I moved it over here and it got, it got pretty shocked in the heat. And then I just got this new this year and it's called Bee Balm. And I, I should have got a couple more, but they were pretty expensive. They were like, I don't know, like $12 for a little plant, but it'll come back every year and it smells exactly like pizza sauce. So uh, Bo says it must be sage but look at how pretty these are. That's crocosamine. And it comes back every year and it does this grassy stuff, real pretty. And then the hot lips, the hot lips attract the pollinators as well. And it comes back every year. It's not doing so great. Um, I, didn't, I didn't trim it back proper in the winter, but it came back a little bit. But as you can see, this is just a terrible mess of hodgepodge flowers, but everything in here is designed to attract pollinators. And then this stuff, I dug it up 
because it was not doing well and it was buried underneath other stuff. I think it's going to survive and it is called, what does that say? Bearded tongue? Bearded tongue. And when it bloomed, it was so pretty. 18 inches tall, 24 inches wide. Well, this year it didn't do that because it was buried. It was buried over there underneath that one. And so it, it wasn't, you know, it, it couldn't go to its full potential. So when I dug it up, the root ball also broke apart. So I split it up into three plants. And so next year, hopefully I'll have big, tall, 18 inch tall plants right in there. And then the black eyed Susan, while I was doing all of that, had some little shoots so I put one here and I put one here so next year hopefully I'm gonna have two huge black-eyed Susan plants right over here now I don't know what this is called I've always called it lamb's ear or lamb's tongue or something like that but I can see the um, the um, pollinators come to this this bloom and I could come out here and deadhead it, but all of these seed heads like are going to just make so many more seeds and spread. And if it just spreads all through here, I would be so happy because it's really pretty and it's really tall. I'd say that's, it's about three feet tall. And then just more of the same. I don't think these uh, crocosomies get enough sun back here or water or attention. Oh, look, like, look at all these bees. That one's pretty interesting looking. He was more yellow. I don't see a lot of the traditional, um, like, honey bees. It, I mean, that kind of looked like a honey bee, but he also looked really fuzzy. And then just more zinnia. I mean, just look at how beautiful that is. Just a pop of color. This is Dicanthus or Sweet William, and it, I didn't think it comes back every year, but this year it did. It's a cute little like mounding type growth. It's not my favorite plant in the world, but you know, it's cute. It's a little pop of color. Some dahlias, they're not really doing very well. Not enough sunshine in this corner. And then I had to transplant this thing because it was getting way too much direct sun. It was just getting scorched. And it is called a coral bell. I think that other thing with the red blooms was also a coral bell, but a, a green variety. But the, the growth on it is super pretty. It's like purple in here. And then it turns green. And I think it gets like little white flowers. So, but I had to transplant that. So Everything that I had to transplant suffering. That right there, that's called a weed and you want to pick it. <laughs> so I just love my pots though. They're so gorgeous. So this is the garden. Like I said, when I'm not tie dyeing, I'm out here trying to keep all this stuff alive. And with the weather we've been having, it's been pretty difficult. And I know a lot of you are having much, much hotter weather than, than we are and some flooding and storms. And, and I'm so sorry for that. Um, but I love it. I just love it out here, especially on a day like today where there's a little bit of a slight breeze. The sun is not just blasting down and being so, so hot. You know, the hodgepodge over here, I'm, you know, it kind of, I like things to look orderly, but that's why I've just only allowed a small space to just like look like a mess. You know, there's nothing wrong with that. And then I can just keep adding pretty plants to it as I find them. Just love these. Look at how cute and sweet they are. Black-eyed Susan daisies. 
All right, guys. Well, I hope everybody's having a happy summer. Happy 2023 summer. Take good care, everybody. Bye-bye. Thank you so much for watching. Please subscribe to my channel, leave a thumbs up, and click the bell and set it to all. That way you get notified of future uploads. And have fun gardening!